somebody hit record? Okay, thanks. Okay, so now I'll go through uh, the past papers. So you go to, uh, again, as you, the normal thing, you go under uh, general, then you go on the class notebook here at the top here, and then you press, and then you will come to here, All right? So go to tutorial tree group one today. So today uh, we're gonna do approximate method. Um, so this one is to, to find the forces in the trusses. Okay, that's the first part. And also you have a frame. So because uh, uh, where can you find trusses? Uh, you find on the uh, foot bridges here. Uh, so here uh, is 3D truss. So with 3D trusses, then uh, you, you got to use a computer uh, program or otherwise um, if you don't use computer program, right, it's uh, still, f you still can do a uh, analysis here. But I think if you do 3D in a computer program, then you will save the, the cross section sizes. So basically you half of this load here. And the half of this um, back loading, you'll go into half of the, the truss. And of course, uh, if you have a roof, it uh, doesn't look like a lot of... Uh, so this, this dead weight material can be quite heavy. So half of the truss at the top will go into your truss here as well. So just um, total weight divided by... Um, then you... you Total weight, then you just uh, divide it by how many joints you have, then you put the, the load on the joints. Okay, so the deck, you have a join, then all the date load and life load will go into your joint. So, and then uh, you've got your normal truss analysis like this. So you got bottom load here. But of course, at the top here, you will add some date weight or or if then um, snow load, so if it's not covered here, so you don't need snow load now. The snow will probably go here, but maybe maintenance people on there, you got to add up the load, so you put it on top like that. Okay. So with with trusses, always uh, your total load divided by number of points, then uh, you get your your point loading on the truss. Okay. So you can see crosses here. So it will be indeterminate. So there's no way you can find out the um, the value of the forces, right? So more equation or equilibrium. So like let's say here, if I do matter of join, I only have summation of x is zero, f y is zero. But now I have um, one force unknown, two, and three. So three unknowns, right? So that's no way I can solve. I need an, uh, um, so this is called indeterminate. So you cannot find um, the, the answer of the, the forces in the truss using only two equation equilibrium. So let's say I got matter of join. So you can't, okay. So what we do here is that if we have cross bracing like that, uh, it's, it's good for wind loading and also uh, you want to stabilize your truss so it doesn't move back and forth. So here, um, so lateral stability, right, this way as well. So, okay, so, here. so what do we do here if we have um, cross bracing? So we, because um, as you know, uh, we've learned solid mechanics, have you? Mm. Okay, so you can see um, column buckling, right? So what happens if you have a long column and then you're subject to a compression force? So I push it in, what, what do you think will happen to the ruler? Yep, bend. 
If I keep going. What if I keep going? Yeah, exactly, it will break. Mm -hmm. So I've broken a few times before the ruler in the class. <laughs> so I have to uh, pay back the ruler. Oh, maybe he didn't mind. So I didn't pay back. But it is called bucking. So remember solid mechanics call them bucking. Uh, so if you have a fixed end condition, then you can see the buckling shape less. So it's like, uh, because you fix the side and then you fix at the top. So you got less buckling, right? But still, under compression force, uh, if you two pin, it's even worse. It will buckle. So with the two fix, you got PCR, you got uh, four times the PCR or pin ended, so you can recall your solid mechanics. Um, so that's why it says here, the long slender member cannot support a compressive force. Hmm. I'll just turn on the chat in case you want, want to ask questions. Mm, okay, so um, the so one assuming the compression will break, so it's not gonna we assume it broken, so it's not gonna take uh, forces, right? So that's why we have uh, here. So the from lecture notes, the compression diagonal uh, zero force, all right? So we assume they have broken. Uh, it's not broken, but we assume it's not gonna. Uh, take part in the load resisting system. So we take out one of the unknown, right? So it's easier for us to, so now we have three unknown. So if we take out one of the member here. So as I remove this guy here, so this guy, right? I only have two unknown. So I can use the two equation of equilibrium. Uh -huh. So that's the whole purpose of uh, doing some assumption because it's too long. So you can see pretty long here because if it's useful, it's not like uh, 600 mm. It can go up to a meter or two meters. But of course, uh, the members are big now. So if you have, um, the second assumption is that you can use either one. So if, if the members are very uh, large, right? Because uh, then they are capable of supporting both tensile and compression. Now. But then uh, each will carry half of the panacea. So each will carry half of the, the forces. Uh, so that's what uh, we have uh, here. Okay, so we do both can support. So here diagonal can support both tensile and compressive forces. Uh, so here, so FBD it's equal to FEC. So we assume that um, it's the force is similar, but one is in tension and one is in compression. So compression and then tension. Okay, so they both share the same value of the force. Right? So if you can, uh, I'll just now here. So uh, it's buckering because it's thin. You see the, the ruler, it's so thin. But if I try to bend the side, then the ruler, it's the depth here. And you get the direction of bending this side because you can bend this side or you can bend the other side. So this side, it will back up. But you try to bend this side. Okay, so you will not even want to bend it. You see it? So just like this, you can bend easily. But then when you do this, um, you can't. Right? So the that the so the thicker the section, the deeper because BHQ on twelve. So you learn the PCR, it's a pi squared E I on R Y R square um, um, L, L square, right? P, uh, the the bucking length. So the I is dependent on the the more inertia. So that's why it says here. So you got to have a bigger section. So that's why it says here. If you have a large section here, so basically you, you, you don't want a small section, then you can assume that both 
can take half of that and half equally equal here. All right. OK, so that's what we have done here. So that's this minute. So first of all, the they can support both tensile and compressive. Uh, then this one will buckle. Okay, so we'll do one case and two cases. Let's compare the value of the forces. So they should come out to be quite similar uh, because again, this is just approximate. Uh, we're not really going to use it for real um, the actual design, right? So it's only approximate. So we will not use it for, well, we still need to do a, a put it in the computer analysis. There's no way we can use by hand um, to solve this except by the computer. So this is when you use computer analysis. But again, you can, um, let's say the client wants, hey, um, can you size out this section for me? Uh, can you consult this footbridge? I want it tomorrow. So maybe you don't have time to put it in the computer. It could be a very complex bridge. So I'll just do a simple analysis. Oh, okay, I can find a force. So finding the force, I'm going to use a strength material, a force here by area. So I could quickly sign up the section and then I can cost up the bridge. So because I know the force, I know the stress in the steel. So here, um, so half, half, just compressed tension. Okay, so how, how do I know it's compression here? Uh, you wouldn't really know, but uh, okay, so uh, just the trick is uh, you have to look and see just by observation. Okay, so if you cut this section, uh, this thing is going to push there. Um, up to you, really. Uh, let's say here. So maybe I'll just do the tension first. Because uh, when you have, uh, so this is going to pull it down, right? For kilonewton. So I'm going to uh, resist it. I'm going to pull it back. Okay, see? So that thing wants to pull down. So then this member will pull it back to, it's going to go down, but I'm going to support it by pulling it back. So kind of roughly you, okay, so because it pulled back, so I want this to be in tension. And then this tension, then I just put an arrow in compression here. Is it okay? Any question here? So just by looking, uh, equal and opposite, right? Action, reaction. So you just do this. Uh, uh, so just uh, sum out all the forces in the Y, and then you can take moment because it's a rigid body. And then uh, because you got two unknown. Uh, uh, yeah, so then you can do some issue FX is zero. Good question. Is Come from the answer. Okay, no, you have no question. Uh, you think you can find this force here? Okay, just the component of the forces, right? Mm. So, so let's say three, four, five. So the force also, let's say meter. So the force also three kilos and five kilos and, and uh, four kilos. So a lot of students. Um, so the proportion of the length, it's going to be exactly the same as the proportion of the force. So same goes here. If I have a triangle there, so I will can proportion the uh, the triangle in the component, sum up all the forces in the x, and then sum up the forces in the y. Okay, so that's what it's doing here. And then take a moment about C here. So uh, force transitions, 
false. False and distant. Then, uh, and then the other false, it's, uh, what is it? Mm, two. Yeah, the component of that. So we still have uh, this one. Okay. So component of uh, F, B, D, the X component. Right. So that comes from that. So you got one force, and then this is uh, F E times uh, 1.5 moment, because it's zero. Okay. Any question here? Okay. So the next part is to assume a uh, buckle. So, so once once you get this already, so the rest uh, you can. So here again, I'm just going to assume tension because this is going to pull like this. So I'm going to pull back. So it's going to be in tension. I'm going to pull like this. I'm going to be in tension. So I just fix this to tension. So that will be in Um, so the rest of we just method join. And um, diagonal kinetic compression falls. So here, uh, again, this is going to be pulling it down. So I'm going to intention. So we're going to intention. So this will not have any falls now. Okay. So no falls there. So we can take out. Okay. Yeah, this should not even be there, right? Uh, F A E. Yeah. So yeah. So this one. You don't even need to put an arrow there, right? So it's gonna be zero anyway. Right. So take it out. Don't even put arrow. It's gonna be more confusing. Huh. So basically, when you take free body diagram, right? Uh, you don't care what's inside. Eh? You just need this forces here. Like that. So don't bother what's inside. Then later, once you find this one, then you go to a matter of join. So here you got two unknown. Oh, one more, T. And see, so three unknown. I need three equation equilibrium. Then you can take moment about uh, whichever B. Let's take a moment about B here. So more false go past here, right? So it's good to take moment about B here. So take moment about B point, right? So here as well, just pull it up because uh, this whole thing. Um, um, OK, so here it's pushing down, right? So I'm going to push back. So I'll assume this in compression. So that load comes out. Uh, I don't want either this or this because uh, you can just put this. Uh, so you can't put in compression because one compression, the other one will be in tension. So when you uh, exit force, then you want to push back to so support it. So it become a compression force, compression in the in the diagonal. So the other one will be tension and then tension and then tension. So here I will, uh, because it's coming out in a joint, so I'll just push it back first. So that will be in compression. So then the other diagonal will be in tension. So same goes to uh, find the free body diagram. Uh, here you can take moment. Then, uh, so do the same with the rest. Okay. Uh, again, just um, your smiley face. So when you take moment about a, uh, do you take moment here? Yeah, here about a, about a, right? 
So basically, GH and then uh, get the thin point fine. So uh, yeah, okay. So I think you can use this as well. So this is quite straightforward. So it's just a matter of drawing your statics. Okay, so um, no question with the trans. Okay, so now you have a, no, you're going to do a frame and a beam and then a trans. It's quite a lot here. And then a frame. Right. So um, the building, let's say, let's say Utah, Utah building. So let's say this is Utah building. So maybe you're there. Uh, say Utah and uh, maybe it's a ground floor. Okay. So the wind comes, right? Uh, can can be Utah also because um, just a factory maybe. Because Utah is multi-story, right? So for this, it's a single story. Single soil factory, for example. I want to find out what is the reaction. So uh, I'm just going to make some assumption here as well. Uh, this two-story building could be a home. Uh, and what is the support reaction as well? Or even here, you can get a bending moment and a shear as well. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, so we need to find the frame. The trust. Uh, okay, so that's a bending moment in your in your uh, building. So it could be somebody there. Okay. So what's a bending moment here? So we do this by assuming some. Uh, so how do you find the? It says want to find the internal moment, right? So to find the, the beam, so we have to do some assumption. Okay, see, so these are example of building frames. Mm -hmm. So as an engineer, we want the size of the section, right? Without the bending moment and the shear or in the, in the forces. So the bending moment, then later we can use um, stress, this moment divided by Z modulus, right? So we can design for the, the moment. Given the moment, I should be able to size up the section modulus for the section here. So I need to know the bending moment diagram. So same goes here with the bending moment diagram. Hmm. Uh, this one we're gonna be like this as well. The bending moment diagram. Yep. It could be like this. So Byron, you should be able to sketch the bending moment diagram quite quickly. So because it's fixed, so how do you sketch this? fairly quickly without even, you know, um, finding the actual value. You don't even need to put in the computer. So you can sketch it like that. So here, so later I'll teach you how to do it. Then here, so by, so in a frame building like this, so you want to be able to get your bending moment. Uh, here, okay. So uh, you know that the uh, can you see this in point two one and point two one? Okay, you got zero moment point. Okay, so you can take out your ruler. I'm just gonna look at my. Notes. So you take out your ruler, right? Um. So look at the ruler, and then uh, get it. In. So you can see my ruler, right? Can you see the, uh, okay. 
uh, okay, take your ruler, fix it, right? Fix it. Okay, put your load in there. Bad. So can you see the... Can you see when there's an inflection point? It's a turn. When it starts to turn, there's going to be... So you're going to have tension first. So here, very important in bending. Yeah? I have a beam, a load that comes. So you're going to have bending moment, right? So bending. So tension at the bottom and compression at the top. So always, uh, when whenever it's something bend, uh, you have tension and compression. But when when you have um, when the wind blows this side, so we reverse the uh, the loading, then uh, you're gonna have uh, tension at the top now, right? tension at the top and compression at the bottom. Okay, so it depends on your loading. So let's say a tree branch, like this cantilever tree branch, right? You have tension at the top, compression at the bottom. Pull the fiber at the top. I think you've done solid mechanics, right? Yeah, you've got a, um, a series of tension and compression. So same goes with here. So when you draw this, so basically before you do any bending moon and shear force, I like to draw a deflected curve, right? Just by using a ruler, a fix your So it's gonna be this way. Then I'm gonna go this way. So tension at the top, tension at the bottom in the span, and tension at the top. So of course the bottom will be in compression. Like that. Okay. So you can see the, the point of zero moment around about here. So the inflection point around about here, right? Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, here and uh, here, okay. So that's when you see your ruler uh, turn. So you see it here, here, here. Okay. The the curve start to inflate. Then it's zero moment. So here we. Zero moment. Okay. So here and here. So this is very useful. So because when we approximate the uh, the hinges where the zero moment means there's no bending moment. So when there's no bending moment, I can do a cut. I can uh, like a hinge. So I can do a free body diagram now. One free body diagram because there's no moment. Then the second free body diagram, and then the third free body diagram. So with this zero hinge, so I can um, make it into a tree free body diagram. Um, so that's going to be useful because uh, then the the support reaction that comes right will become a cantilever. So that one, one free body diagram. So well, first we have to account for the W uh, 0.8 L on two here. And of course, on top of your EDL. So it's one free body diagram here. And then do this first also. You gotta do this first. So free body diagram one. So the reaction. So that's a, when you do that one, it has a. Reaction, right? So the reaction become an action on the other free body diagram. I shouldn't um, okay, not, not much time to teach already. So, um, do you understand? Okay, so here at point one of, um, so point, so the hinge will form, so it's gonna be like this, and then like this. Tension, tension, tension. So here, round about, uh, when you have a zero moment, Point one of an L. Hmm. Point two. Is it point one or point two? Two to five. They are by two. Four fifty, right? 
for 50.1. Four fifty point five Yeah, taking point one of the line. You can also take point two. So it's um, together. So I thought the whole thing is um, so it is one part is 0.225. Okay, so this whole thing is still 450. Yeah? So I'll take 0.1 of uh, 4005. There's 0.1. Right. Okay. So at uh, this one, you draw one free very diagram. Fix. Then do this free body diagram one first. Then you do the free body diagram two. Okay. So do this one first. Then the support reaction. Remember, the support reaction must put back on. So support reaction. becomes an action on a free body diagram too, right? All right. So just do the equation of equilibrium, you should be able to find a moment there. Okay, so how about if you have another frame like this? So uh, this is to find the beam, right? To so use this as beam bending moment. Beam bending moment. Okay. Because just now I was using a ruler. It was the beam, right? But I have to look at the the, the column, um, the frame yet. So sometimes I need the frame moment or the support reaction at the frame. That's a hinge, uh, hinge here, and that's hinge at uh, the this one. Okay, so once you put a hinge, then uh, you can cut it as a free body diagram. Uh, one, and then uh, cut it as a free body diagram two. Okay, so the point in inflection. So again, just go back to your ruler. Uh, I only have one ruler, but can you imagine uh, my hand is my column and my beam? So together, I move. Is it move? And I, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like this. So can you see the point in inflection here? Here, this is zero moment. Tension here, then you turn, and the tension on the other side. Tension here. But here is zero infection. 
So it's going to be no moment there. Right? The tension compression, then it goes to no moment, then tension and compression here. So that's uh, one of that. Um, another one, uh, you can assume the hinge in the middle. So here, uh, my you can assume, oh, it's going to be, you can also assume three hinges here, one, two, and three. Right. So you can have free brain diagram one. Whenever you hinge in, you can cut section already. You can in fact have a four free brain diagram. That's how you end up four. Mm. And then you can assume all the one third. So we can have one third. So it depends if it's six meters, then this one is two meters. So again, free body diagram, free body diagram. Then uh, again, you're going to end up with four free body diagram. So for each free body diagram has how many support reaction? Um, three equation equilibrium, right? So you got uh, times three, four free body diagram. So in fact, you can have 12, you can go up to about 12 unknowns. So the more free body diagram, the more um, support reaction because you, you already have one, two, three, four, five, six here. There's already six unknown here. So you can solve up to 12 unknown reaction. Okay, because here as well. So you can go back here. So this one is pin here. So we take it at the uh, uh, midpoint. So to uh, midpoint here. So here and here and here. Right. So okay, one free. You can take the whole free body diagram for this. Uh, also can. And then or um, you can have one free body diagram, two free body diagram, three and four. So just keep note that um, here, mm, so there's three meter and three meter, but you can also have one third here. So you can assume it um, L or three here the hinge location, okay? So hinge location, LO2. Location. Oh, oh LO3. Oh, so okay. So because uh, the key here is here. You, you don't really know where it will start to inflect, right? But you can just say that uh, it's going to be about one third. Or I can just say perfectly half, also can, I can see. I ah, hear half of that line. So if it depends on the support, right? if it's not that, uh, so the, the fixity depends on the half. So sometimes um, uh, the slight rotation, so not fully fixed. So you can uh, assume that if it's not fully fixed, you can you can see that. Uh, but if it's fully fixed, then you can have a perfect half. The hinge will be at a half. If it's not fully fixed, then you kind of have something like that. So one third. Okay. So so from here, just take free body diagram. Then, uh, okay, so for this one, it's going to be a half of the column. So if you have a truss there, so with a truss, so go back to the rule. So you just follow the rule where the hinge are formed. So follow this one. You form a hinge at uh, here. Um, half of the, uh, um, the, if you have a truss, this is going to form half. So here, half of this height, eh? 
of your column height. So hinge. So you get one free bird diagram, two free bird diagram, and then take this whole lot as your free bird diagram. Okay, so because uh huh. This is what's going on here. So we'll do the same with this one. One free bird diagram at 1.8. This one. Okay. Okay. Then you just use the equation of equilibrium. Rotate. And then join equilibrium as well. You can use the method of join. Um, for this one, um, then if you have a single story, so I think there is a, a note the end of the summary it says, how do you know when they're going to use a powder method or cantilever method? So you have a single story, single bay. Uh, you got single story, multi bay. So as soon as uh, you got single story, then you use a powder method. And then you can use a cantilever method when you have multi story. So more than one story, so two story above. Right? You can use a cantilever method. Mm -hmm. so let's go back to our theme. So where are the hinge formation? So again, uh, hinge in the middle. So single story, multi is multi story. And then uh, you can also, this one is E, V because of V. So assume that both of them take the same um, support reaction, the shear. P, then you got 2V to resist it. So each one will equal to, equal and opposite. Eh? Um, the force P, it's going to push it. It could be a wind load or earthquake load. It's going to push your powder frame with P. So this is also assumption. It may not be uh, the actual value. Okay. So with approximation method, we are a lot assuming. So really all these answers so it cannot be used for your final design. It can only maybe do some preliminary costing of the building, but not for the actual design. So I'm just going to assume P, so here it's P on 2 and P on 2. Um, any question as a school final student? So, okay, or you can, um, because uh, this is V, right? So this, in the middle, it's going to be 2V. So just, just follow the rule because uh, one sign it's V, right? So it's V and then V, but you're adding another one here. So V, 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 like you're combining it. So it becomes two V here. Because hmm. it's in the middle, it's gonna, because there's uh, intermediate behavior. you got forces come. Yeah, here you're gonna support the the that beta. So again, just put the wave it's single, just assume the hinge to be here, and then here, 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 here. So you you must locate your hinge position first before you start. Then you only you draw your free point diagram. Then only you find your uh forces right again pin there's no moment there eh? so it's only a y and uh ax right of course here it's a uh, point m so we'll go um m y and m x uh there's a fixed point so be careful you have a moment in support here fix a point AX, AY, and MA. So, cantilever method. So, basically, you want the. Okay, so, if you have a. 
Let's see, you have a like that building, right? It's gonna rotate, right? The wind force you know, pressure building rotated. So can you see here? It's get pull out, and then that can push down. Right? So tension and then compression. So whenever something bend, there will always be a tension and then a compression. So that's what we are actually making use of this one. Bend. So it's going to get pulled up. Right. Uh, couple, remember you're in your settings. Right. Then uh, when you get pulled and then get pushed, but this one is your support reaction. Anchor it back down. Anchor down. Because that one to push out, but I'm going to pull it back. Mm -hmm. So pull back. So the red one, these are reaction. I do not want the building to uh, rotate. Right. So I'm going to make sure you get pushed down. Or oh, this one extra uh, force will get uh, resisted this way. Okay, so this is reaction. The green ones is your action. You can set all. So how do you get the forces here? Very easy. That's your center of gravity. So get the forces here according to the similar triangle. Okay, I want to find the centroid. So the CG is also based on the sizes of the column. Right. So the bigger the column, then the CG will move towards the bigger column. So if it's the same column size, then you're going to have it in the middle of the CG. Okay, so here, that's what we have done here. So H. Okay, so yeah, uh, this one without the hinge here, right? Because why? But that one has a hinge here. So if it's double story, you will hinge it in the uh, in the beam as well. So you got one free boy diagram right there. And then another one. No, this is gonna be careful. Eh? But I just do that one first and then you're gonna have this one. Hmm. Maybe you don't have to go down to the bottom see now to find. Hmm. Oh, because I only want to draw the moment diagram, right? So we're just going to concentrate on here. So if, it's, uh, if you want to keep going, and then you can draw another free body diagram. Okay. Yeah, so Catherine method, uh, CG, centimeter. So you know that stress mm, is when you the building get pushed, push. Then I'm gonna pull back reaction. So in tension and then in compression. Then here, uh, there's also a little bit of tension, eh? smaller tension, and then smaller compression value. Again, stress tension, stress is force or area. Compressive stress as well. So just by using the stress and then you get your force value multiplied by the area. 
So the stress value is um, determined from um, so force area in urea. So you need a force value here. <clears throat> because the stress will cancel out. Mm. OK, so any question so far that you want to ask? Mm. Are you all busy now? Not sure how to determine which beam is compression, which one uh, uh, it's in tension. Uh, when the question say can't support compression force. Oh, okay. So we go back to your truss, right? Just now that one. So if you go back to your truss. Um, here. So here, because uh, again, uh, it will buckle. So just by looking at this, so before I even, how I decide which one is tension and which one is compression, I just look by it. Just you pull push, right? When Whenever this, uh, this force, it's going to pull it down. So I'm going to pull back. So when you pull back, it becomes a tension force, right? Does it make sense? This is going to uh, pull it down. But I'm going to have a, because to support it, I have to pull it back out. I'm not going to let it go down. Uh, the equilibrium is not going to pull my truss down. So to resist the pulling down, I'm going to, I to, to, to have a tension to pull it back out. So that's how I know that this is tension. Uh, so if one is tension, then the other side is compression. So zero force and for this one. Does that answer your question? Um, how you determine you have to um, use pull push and then it's common sense only. When when somebody push you, you want to resist by pushing it back. If somebody pull you, and if somebody pull you away, and then you want somebody to pull you back, right? Uh, so this one, because this one is pushing in, so it's like um, force, right? So I'm gonna and to resist the downward push, I'm gonna push back, right? So when it is gonna be compression, when you guys are pushing, man, why can't uh, for Q two? Uh, for Q2, then uh, yeah. no, I'm just gonna. Wait, I I, I send the. Um, can you, can you wait for a while? I just gonna send it. <laughs> Does that answer your question for Q2? Why, why we can't put BF and EC as compression? BF and E, oh, okay, this one, BF, can, no problem. Because this one, you decide uh, BF compression. So you want, uh, can BF compression and EC, right? Can EC in compression? Um, remember, one compression, one tension. So if I decide already this to be compression, this will be tension. So if you say you don't like this, uh, you can just do, it, it, the answer will come out to be the same one. No problem, it's just an assumption. So let's say uh, here, so you, you want this to be in compression, can. 
So compression, but then this one become a tension. Uh, so no longer, uh, no longer in, uh, in tension. I mean, in compression. Do you, do you understand? Because one compression, one tension. Mm. So you can put it on the other side. So symmetric mirror, mirror it over, no problem. Uh, the, you will still get about, uh, because, uh, yeah, then, then your member will be in compression. We will we'll still accept. Uh, it's just, again, it's an uh, approximate method. It's not the actual uh, value. Because now you have a cross bracing. There's no way you can find the forces inside without assuming one of it is compression or tension. Okay, anything else? Okay, 1230 already. Um, now, instead of consultation, do you still want to do the breakout room? I, I have a uh, apron. So maybe you might want to discuss where you want to put a hinge. Uh, I've got September. I've got 2019. How about this one? 2018. So I was, if you want to leave, you leave for those who want to stay on. So I want you to take a look at the, uh, uh, these four example. Where, show me where you want to, um, I should put in a collaboration space, right? So you can uh, annotate on it where you want to do the hinges, okay? Are you going to take a um, cantilever method or part of, part of method? Uh, so for those who need to go, then you can just go, but you do it on your own time. So I will just uh, go again uh, room to room. Um, since uh, just nice now, it's supposed to be break time, right? How many of you here? Meeting nine. Mm. Yep, so I'll just put eight. Mm. Okay, eight of you. So I'll just open break up once. How many? Uh, seven. So I, oh, okay. So everybody doesn't want to go into breakout room, is it? So trust me, uh, you you pay your fee and then um, it's going to be more. Uh, okay, nobody. <laughs> we have six of you here. Okay, so I'm going to do two breakout rooms. Yeah, if you drag it to the end, you still have to revise and then might as well just try and do it now. Because I already explained this now, so I want your turn to be able to do the work. Ah, you know, just create two rooms in.
Zi Yao, you have uh, a Ms. question to ask me? I want to yeah. ask one question. I'm currently uh -huh. doing the structure analysis two assignment. Uh -huh. uh, but the one you have to ask your lecturer. Yeah, I know, I know. But uh -huh. I want to ask one single thing. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm doing the stiffness method for the trust. Uh -huh. right? I got include the thermal effects and other things. Uh, so uh, one design is the cross-sectional area, right? Is there a catalog for the area or something or we just or for, yeah, you for can my go to the website. Or for That's my fine. level, I just assume a value enough. Uh, no, you, you need to use a catalog. Need to use that. Uh, unless you want to ask the fabricator to fabricate a new uh, oh. unless you want to ask the fabricator to fabricate a new section for you. So most of the time, uh, we will use whatever that's in the market, unless your your bridge is very heavy. So yeah, then you will have to use a um, uh, special made. Uh, Catalog like ASTM. Um, uh, I will use a uh, uh, British standard uh, or Euro Euro code. Oh, uh, Euro code inside got the catalog. Uh, not 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 really. Uh, according to Euro code, the the production it's according to the Euro European standard. So ASTM is according to the American standard. Oh. Mm. Okay. So. Yeah. European standard. Mm. British standard. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Must follow their local la. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got it. Yeah. So uh, what you do is uh, you, you can just go to um, somebody in room. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm just going to. Mm. Typically, the young modulus, we just assume 210 GPA based on the Euro cola. Uh, still design. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here, you just go to the blue book. Uh, blue book. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you just um just by um steel. Sections. Uh -huh. So still live book for this is the UK section. You can just use. Oh, this. well, I don't know about this. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, I... so you can find the sizes here. Okay. Mm. I think... So UK dimension and properties. Oh. Uh, everything is there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, no problem. And this uh, uh, your. Yeah, unless you have a big, big, big section that you can need to, you have to form yourself. So you will study that in your advanced deal where you can actually, you will make up your own eye section. So plates, plates and plate, you weld them together to make a big section. Okay. Because uh, you, you sometimes you, you may need that. Hmm. 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 Okay. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no now problem. I, no, I want to do. Actually, okay. no problem. So we're just gonna be able to get a bit as well. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, okay. So you want to try the pass paper? Uh, I will try later, I think. Ah, okay, right now sure. I got no Simon. Uh-huh, okay. okay. I know I got a lot of Simon. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is your. Um, this does still ask me the same thing. Hmm. Okay, so I have to go to join the room. See you. Oh, okay, I tried. <laughs> 